Riding shotgun refers to the practice of sitting next to the driver in a moving vehicle. The term riding shotgun came around after the time of the stagecoach when somebody used to sit next to the driver holding a shotgun in case they ran into bandits. My name is Charlie Cook and I drive a lot. I like to talk to people while I'm driving, so I interview people in my car while I'm driving. Welcome to Riding Shotgun with Charlie. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this episode of Riding Shotgun with Charlie. I am outside of Atlanta, and I have with me Mark Walters. Oh my God, I usually do this when we're not driving, but I'm gonna, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna live on the wild side, baby. Mark, I'm gonna set you up with a little bit of Lead Slinger's hand sanitizer, so we can shake hands. Would you like a little? It's really sure. watery. You'd Keep really, going straight. You need Keep to cup your hand. You're good, you're It's good. really watery, man. There, go ahead and just maybe. So I generally don't do masks, you know, hand sanitizers. I'm just kidding. Yes, I do. There you go. A little more? No, go, go ahead. Right. Shake my paw. Go shake my paw. <laughs> We're good to rock and roll. It's like Blood Brothers go. now, right? There we Lead go. Slinger's hand Lead sanitizer. Lead Slinger's hand so. sanitizer, Blood Brothers. Well, that's fun because the show comes from the Lead Slinger's platinum microphone on Sunday nights. Last night, of course, we kicked off a, just an amazing three hour program last night. If you missed it, Camera Janet, people, we'll put a link there. <laughs> make sure to go check it out. Uh, Janet Mefford was on the program last night in hour two, and she was just incredible. Uh, she said a line I thought was great, and it was. Um, I left her. You can't, you can't get someone to come up to a logical conclusion if they didn't arrive there on a logical conclusion. To begin yes, with. you can't change her, her mind. father's deal. And in fact, when you came to the door, I was arguing. I wasn't arguing. <laughs> I was speaking with my... <laughs> if you, I don't want to give this away. If you listened to the show last night, I called out a relative who sent me a really dopey... Idi well, it was an in idiotic, completely liberal, you know, regurgitation of some stupid tweet that says you got to vote as if you're not white. you got to vote as if you're, you know daughter is gay or you got to vote as if your son was a victim of gun violence if basically you got to vote every liberal wish list is what it was it's as so I'm supposed to feel guilty for being a successful white talk radio host and having what I have because I didn't work for it and earn it it was given to me you know this gibberish garbage and when you walked in that argument was raging in the uh, <laughs> it actually wasn't an argument myself her mother the person who sent the tweet and her mother and my wife were all in agreement you know, and you caught me in the tail. It was kind of fun. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just saying. And so I don't. I don't <laughs> that was on the program last night. If you want to listen to it, it was really good. Sunday night, Put a uh, August 23rd. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. I got to tell you, it's great to be down here. It's. Um, I. I uh, I let Brent Amston know that I was coming down and uh, we were hoping to connect and he sent me a picture of me doing the radio show with you It was almost four years ago to the date. Can you believe that? I made you famous four years you ago? You did! I wow. owe all of this to you, man. <laughs> no, I, you don't. You were doing this prior to, but I'm glad I was able to give you I, a little jump start. I know? was, but I, rem I remember being in my kitchen on the phone with you and you're like, Hey, do you want to come speak at the uh, Gun Rights Policy Conference in Tampa? Yeah. And I'm like, uh, Yes, well, it worked. I, I, I thought it was perfect. Hey, real quick, uh, for a lot of YouTube li well, viewers, what I'm doing is I'm taking Charlie, because we're in my neck of the woods now, and I'm taking you down. Do you remember the television show Ozark? A lot of people might not realize, but tons of movies and TVs are filmed in, in Georgia. Mm -hmm. In particular, a very popular series, Ozark, is filmed right here down the road from my home. And I'm taking you down to, you saw it, right? Parts of it? Yeah. Do you remember yeah. the Blue Cat Lodge? The bar that he oh owned. yeah 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 that's right here we're gonna go I'm gonna show you the Blue Cat Lodge <laughs> and the homes where they hid the money in the walls and all that it that's was all filmed on the marina right down here we're gonna go down and that's too towards cool. my marina and I'll show you that stuff so it's kind of fun very cool yeah so anyway yeah, yeah so four years uh, four years come come speak at the gun rights policy conference the words you said to me on the phone were welcome to the big leagues you skip the minors and I'm like <laughs> what does that mean I, I actually is, remember uh, that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. I don't really know what I meant by skipping the minors either. I don't know what's minor league with what you're doing. I mean, you popped in on this, and I thought it, when I saw it, it was fantastic. And it kind of came on top of your Dungrams. Yeah. That I had already seen, you know, mm -hmm. which is where I knew you from. Now, slow down right here. This is the Blue Cat Lodge. This is the Blue Cat Lodge. That's, now, the that. sign has been changed because JD's bought it. The Blue Cat Lodge was up on top. That's oh the marina gosh. where they killed everybody. You know? Here, let's, um, so you can we'll see get this that. camera. Get on. 
blue doggy. That's the Blue Cat Lodge. People will recognize that very there. much. All right, we're gonna. And these are the blue. Uh, you can't go up there. It's private now. But those are all the. Uh, they took most of them down. They built some of the set as some of those cottages. But those were the cottages where uh, Jason Bateman and his wow. corrupt wife. And this is where they took the money from the Russians or whoever it was here in this parking lot. Right oh now. my gosh. Yeah, and that was the marina that they had everything done where she came in and they found him dead and all that stuff. And that's that's it. too cool, man. Pretty cool, huh? That is way cool. I that's had no clue. They, yes, it's all filmed right here. And uh, it was interesting because Netflix actually bought this bar. Used, this bar has been here for Let's years and years. Way. Right on the lake. Yeah, hang, right. Has been here for years. It's been a bunch of different names. Netflix came in and bought it, turned it into the Blue Cat Lodge, and this was all covered with filming all around in here. Wow. This is cool, man. This is Lake Alatoona for... Uh, as if you were crossing over the bridge on Bell's Ferry, we'll go down and I'll show you where we keep our boat. They did some filming down there too. Might as well, right? Got nowhere else to go. Right. Okay. But yeah, you uh, you kind of, I really enjoyed what you were doing. Oh, and nice. I, I thought, really neat to be able to get folks who are in the community out there on a different platform and a really unique platform that nobody was doing before. I'm just thrilled at your success. Keep going. I'm just getting this right. Uh, I, I, me too, man. I, I absolutely love it. I've, I'm telling people now that they're, um, the, the listeners and the viewers are just, they're, they're a fly on the rearview mirror is what it is. Yeah. And I, I had filmed Beth Alcazar recently and she, she's like, which humor do we look at? I'm like, ah, don't worry about it. We're just going to drive and talk. That's it. It's two people in a car having a conversation. Don't look at any cameras. Forget they're there. Yeah. Exactly. Unless you want to plug something. Ah, yeah. <laughs> then you really have to look at it. <laughs> Armed American Radio's Monster Cast on Sundays, okay, guys? Exactly. And then we can edit that so you're pointing at each camera. There you go. That's too cool, man. Yeah, I, uh, I, by the way, I owe you an apology, and I'll apologize publicly here for you on the, while I'm riding shotgun with you. Last night we had problems with the network. My intention was to get Charlie to call into the program last night. My schedule was completely full, and then we lost sound on uh, one of the oh, live stream yeah. audios. Not over the radio, but that kind of took a little bit of my time and I was unable to get with you, so I apologize That's for that. It's quite all right, man. I'm quite sure. all right. Yeah, you're right up at the light. All right. So speaking of video, GRPC is uh, gonna be soon and it's all videos. Yeah, it's all viral, uh, viral. It's all, it's all virtual. virtual. It's, it's a virtual, it's a long night. Sundays are long nights for me. We're filming this on Monday. Uh, yeah, it's virtual this year. Which doesn't surprise me. I was not confident as a member of the board of directors of the CCRKBA. Yep. I was not confident that this was going to go off. Uh, you know, you've got people flying from across the country. Our demographic is not, you know, 20s and teens. Right. Our demographic is 45 up. Uh, and I just didn't see, you know, we had 1,100 people register last year for Phoenix, and I just didn't see that. In Orlando, we would have had that many more than likely, but. With all the COVID nonsense and everything, I didn't see anybody traveling or greatly reduced. And I wasn't convinced anyway the hotel was going to allow it. And unfortunately, we were right. Yeah. And we're now doing it virtually. In fact, when I'm done with you today, I'm being yelled at to make sure I get that video of me, my virtual appearance. Up. So I'm going to spend all day on that today. <laughs> so, so here's what I've done. I have been filming. I have a, a speech-ish that I've written and I've filmed it with Nashville in the background, with Birmingham in the background. Yeah. I actually went to, um, I went down to Kennesaw today and I, I stood in front of the little clock down by the railroad mm -hmm. and I got Kennesaw behind there and um, hoping to make, uh, do a video today in Atlanta talking about the same thing and just slice this whole thing together so I get my five minute Good. video. Well, you know what, uh, Kennesaw, by the way, I don't know if you know much history about Kennesaw, but Kennesaw is Guntown, USA. Back in 1987, Kennesaw passed an ordinance that made international news requiring every homeowner to have a loaded firearm in the home. That was in response to, I believe it was Oak Park, Illinois, make a left, uh, to Oak Park, Illinois. Forgive me on the name, it was, a, it was an Illinois town that had banned guns mm -hmm. in the county, the town count, the council, or had, had, you know, enacted some clearly unconstitutional ordinance right. in Kennesaw in reaction to that. Kennesaw had been experiencing a lot of crime, if you, as you just know. It's just a little bit north of downtown Atlanta. Uh, one of the first bedroom communities you come to outside Marietta had been experiencing a big crime wave. So in answer to that ban in Illinois, they went ahead and instituted that. Now, it doesn't hold the weight of law, but, you know, criminals got the message. Crime fell 87% and stayed at that level to this day. This I, I I read this too about Kennesaw. The population skyrocketed. Yeah, it it like 
people were moving there because they knew that every every house had a gun in it and everybody would uh every house had a gun in it anyway i mean this is georgia <laughs> you know right uh <laughs> yeah hang on right here what we're doing this is kind of interesting we're going down to and i get a lot of questions about this on the show because i've talked about it a lot but we're going down to a core of engineer property this is lake alatoona where i keep my boat mm -hmm. and it's core it's owned by the corps of engineers there's a dam 20 some miles away by water it's about 20 minutes away and there's really nice campgrounds down here but it's all core property and corps of engineers doesn't allow firearms on their property yeah right <laughs> okay sure I, i've camped in this campground i've never been disarmed unarmed in a, in a campground ever uh but nonetheless i was in violation of corps of engineer rules right so georgia Carey sued the corps of engineers a number of years ago and the corps backed off and said look do us a favor let's just Drop your lawsuit. We don't want to waste a bunch of money. There's new directives coming down. We're more than likely going to allow carry on the properties here in the near future anyway. Mm -hmm. Let's save everybody some money and some time. Georgia Carry, one of the stipulations was if our membership contact your commander as a member of Georgia Carry and provide you proof that they have their carry permit and are Georgia Carry members, they said we will authorize and give you permission to carry on property. So I've had permission to carry here for a number of years. And it's not just here, it's across the country. But back on June 28th, public comment ended. The Corps of Engineers is now in the process of deciding whether or not to just go ahead and remove that. And that more will more than likely happen mm -hmm. probably in the not too distant future. It could be tomorrow we could hear a response on that. So you're all in core property here now. Mm -hmm. And the gun that I'm carrying right now without that would be illegal. Right. But, and because I play by the rules I actually, as you know, when we left my house I went back in and grabbed that. Grab the my permission slip which is right there on an envelope. Yeah, you can hang it right in here. All right. This is cool. You've talked so much about um, uh, you've you've talked so much about going out on the boat and, and all the uh, yeah. you know all the cool stuff. It's, it's well, pretty wild. Sometimes when you talk to me, I'll, I'll tell you I'm either heading out there or something like that. So I wanted to show you while we're here. This is where we. This is awesome. This is where the family goes when we are not on radio six days a week. We come down here and spend as much time down here as we can. My daughter does anyway. <laughs> Likes all the boys that put the boats away. You know. Right. You know how teenage girls are. But there's a there's there's uh, I get a little benefit from that. They take really good care of my boat. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is uh, this is Lake Alatoona here. Very cool. Where we where we keep the boat. All right, we can we head do? straight down and flip around. We'll come back out. Cool, man. Take it around. The, around the front. This is awesome. Now I'm gonna tell you something interesting. If you when we come back around, I guess if you turn around, people will be able to see. The docks. I want them to get a visual. I like to paint theater of the mind on the radio, right? Mm -hmm. We had an incident down here. So why would you carry a gun on the lake? Oh, what are you? What are you paranoid? You got to carry a gun when you're out on your boat. I mean, come on, dude, seriously. Right. Yeah, because nothing happens at lakes, and nothing happens right. at people marinas, don't and over -drink people don't do like anything, that. and you know, you never get into arguments or fights, and nobody's, you know, nobody else wants to wants to harm you. What kind of crime occurs on the lake? Well, the dock that you're looking at. Yeah. This happened just last week. There was a Malibu ski boat right here at the dock. As you can see, there are boats that are left in the water. Yep. And what you do is you have an app. If you want to bring your boat in, these guys out here will, you hit the app, I've returned, and they'll come and pick your boat up before you leave. Otherwise, you can leave it in the water because mm -hmm. we keep it in dry dock. Guy has a $150,000 Malibu ski boat out here. Wow. Got ripped off. Somebody came down to this marina. Wow. Hot wired that thing like it was a car and took it. Are you kidding? <laughs> he caught up to him. They caught up to him back here at the marina and stuffed a gun in his face right here. It wow. happens. It happens anywhere. This was just last week. Do you think he the had marina. the letter? Well, let me put it this way. <laughs> I'm sure. I, I, don't, I'm not, so I don't know how random that was. <laughs> Who goes into a packed marina on Corps of Engineer property and steals a you know, one particular boat? Right. You know, I, I don't know what's going on inside, but the fact of the matter is that there was a boat stolen here. There was a crime committed. There was an aggravated assault. A firearm was pulled on an individual. While the you know for I guess he was accusing them of whatever the case was, but it happens. It happens anywhere. It can happen to anybody. It can happen yeah. any place, any time. Even while you're out here trying to enjoy yourself, mm -hmm. uh, you know this guy had a gun stuffed in his face. But like I said, who knows what the rest of that story is? Right. I have no idea. Well, the other thing is this: who uh, who has the right to tell you what you can and can't do? Well, you know, you know, not as much 
on the maybe on the campgrounds. I mean, I don't know if you've ever been to a campground, but uh, there, again, a, there's a lot of. You get a little kid at you know three o'clock in the morning and says, "Daddy, I gotta go potty," and you gotta walk a half a mile to some outdoor crapper. Yeah. With us, you know, a three-year-old through a campground in the middle of the night. I mean, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna have a firearm. Right. You, you could run into a bear. Run into anything. Run into something, man. Yeah. I remember the very first time uh, we, we were going up to New Hampshire one time. The kids were super young. I was relatively new to gun ownership. The one handgun I had was a Smith and Wesson Model 19, 357, mm -hmm. with a six-inch barrel. Yeah. I had a Phobos holster for it, so it's imposing stuck. firearm. Yes, very, very. I wanted something that looked dirty, hairy, but wasn't a 44. So, Rick Grimes, baby, you were <laughs> Rick Grimes. I um, yeah. <laughs> Pistol. So I had um, a, we were, I could carry in New Hampshire because New Hampshire was an open carry state. Right. Um, Left. And I had a I had a, my permit in New Hampshire as well, <coughs> but you could only carry without a permit. And I wanted to carry. And my wife was like, "No, you shouldn't." Blah 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 blah. So we get up to this place called Storyland. We're going with some friends of ours. We get up to Storyland, and we checked into our uh, our room. And at the check-in, they're like, "Oh, here's a little brochure on the bears." I'm like, "The bears?" <laughs> and she's like, "Yeah, we got bears all over the place." I'm like, "Holy crap!" We, you know, we drive to our area, our, our whatever cabin, apartment, whatever it was. Um, we start. I'm, I'm bringing in all this stuff because the kids were young, so there's a lot of a lot of stuff to bring in. And I heard some scratching noise, and I looked over where the garbage was, and I saw this big mound as a bear. <laughs> and I'm like, this would be a nice time to have that gun on me, but I think I'm just gonna go in and wait it out. Yeah, that gun wouldn't <laughs> have worked for you, by the way. You know, I, I've got another bear story too. Uh, you were just in my neighborhood. You saw my house. You have a beautiful house in a wonderful neighborhood. Cul-de-sac in the corner, right? Yeah. Nice piece of property just under an acre because I'm in the corner there and all that. And the woods butts up right against the back of my house. Got a nice mm -hmm. creek down there in the holler back creek in the AR, right? <laughs> uh, but I got a neighbor and I were sitting out front one night. We were just enjoying a Friday night, drinking some whiskey, smoking some cigars on my front porch. When now my neighbor, big guy, 6'4", 320 pounds jumps up off the porch and points into my front yard and says, holy shit. <laughs> and I, I looked at him, I thought, okay, what's he doing? Mm -hmm. How much whiskey's he had to drink? Right. When he goes, dude, and he points. And I I had the side of my house next to me, so I kind of had to lean forward. Yep. I look over in the right corner of my house, hang a left. Look over in the right corner of my house, and there is a freaking 300 plus pound bear walking through my front yard. Holy moly. Right by the corner, in a residential neighborhood. Yikes. <laughs> I freaked, man, you know? I would too. I, I freaked. I said, what the hell is that thing doing in my front yard, and where did it come from? It didn't walk in front of us out of the woods, so it clearly had come from behind us, oh which means God. it came out of the creek in the woods behind the house, walked across my driveway, because the driveway, as you know, is on the side of the house, and right into the front yard, and then it turned and looked at us like, what? <laughs> well, don't worry. I own this now. It's okay. It's, Leave me alone. It'll be fine. It, it, it walked across the street, sniffed out my neighbor's house, and... Next thing I know, I heard another neighbor yelling and screaming, and I got on the phone with 911. I said, look, there's a bear in the neighborhood. What do we do? Right. Their answer was nothing. <laughs> Leave <laughs> it right. alone. If it's not bothering anybody, let it go. And they said, but we do want you to call wildlife. So we called the wildlife. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, hang right. That's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, I've, I've had a lot of... In, in the town I live in, in Massachusetts, people are putting pictures of their... Um, the rings, their, you know, door cameras, and yeah. um, there's mountain lions once in a while. And crime, Holy too. Cri well, crime, too. They catch crime, too, don't they? Isn't that amazing? They do. I it's mean, there are bad mail delivery USPS employees that steal stuff. Can you believe FedEx people steal stuff? Uh, yeah. Can you believe people dress up like FedEx people steal stuff? <laughs> I mean, come on, man. It's just the world we live in, you know? I ordered a phone case from Amazon a couple weeks ago and it came in a padded, you know, one of those big padded envelopes and stamped where the my address was, it said um, received with no contents. Oh. <laughs> what would you do to this? Well, yeah, it's funny. I, yeah, funny you mention that. Over the course of the last few years, it hadn't happened in about four years, I would get mail to my house that was perfectly, I mean, perfectly cleanly slid open. Wow. And I had some kind, my wife had some, uh, some pharmaceutical, we had uh, like a, a, a mail order mm -hmm. deal. We had pharmaceuticals stolen. And it was coming from the post office, dude. 
It's either it's either coming from somebody at the post office, or it's coming from the mail person itself, right. him or herself. You know, it didn't make it there open all the way across. So somebody in the local post office is stealing stuff. So go ahead and hang a right. Hang a right. All right. I'll show you one of the COVID high schools, two of the COVID high schools. A COVID That high are school. making national news. Oh my gosh. For being closed. See, here in Georgia, we never really closed up. Yeah. We never really did. Uh, maybe for a one or two week period. But uh, in, in my location, in my home, the, the, uh, the restaurants stayed open. I think they were closed once the governor issued an order for about a week mm -hmm. for indoor dining, but they stayed open for outdoor dining, and then a week later they opened up for indoor. So we've never really changed our way of life here. Other than the fact that uh, you know people walk around with these stupid face coverings on, but uh, the high schools here in uh, Cherokee County, where the, our kids go back to school August second every year, that's not unusual. That's when they start on a modified year, so it's early for most people in the country. So this became looked at as a model. New York Times has written all this up around here. The uh, two high schools out of several in the county were shut down, Etowah High School and then later Woodstock High School were shut down because of 14 positive COVID cases. Wow. And my daughter was one of the 925 kids that at the time were sent home to quarantine because of quote unquote close contact. They do it out of just precaution that if she were anywhere near that person in a particular room, they go ahead and send that person home. But uh, the schools are getting ready to reopen on the 31st, and I'm glad they're reopening on the 31st because this country's got to get back to normal. Oh my God. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask, but get this country back to work. Enough games, and of course it's being politicized now, but... Oh my gosh, it's, it's out of control, man. Yeah, both of these high schools made national news because, God forbid, Georgia open up their schools while states like yours, which are basically communist foreign nations that happen to be within our borders, you know, refuse to, to go back to work and play politics with us. You know what kind of did it for me is there are three hotel, hotels in my town. Hang left of the light. All right. And uh, three hotels in my town, and there's cars from out of state all the time. Yeah. And I'm like, so I have, I, I wanted to come down and do a do a tour of, of some southern, uh, southern states, uh, east of the Mississippi. And I had some friends that were like, what are you doing? You're going down. That's where all, that's where all the crazy stuff is going on. Uh, you know, this is just like, people paying too much attention to news, agreed, fake news, okay? Agreed. Listen, I, I was at, I had a meeting at the Waverly Hotel, and first off, let me say this. Is COVID real? Yeah, it's real. I'm not downplaying it, okay? 170,000 Americans died from this, vast majority of them over 70 in nursing homes, by the way, and a huge percentage of those up in your neck of the woods. We've had over 5,000 deaths in the state of Georgia, but people don't put that in perspective. 12,000 other Georgians died during that same period of other causes. So the other, you know, 2,000 died of car, whatever the numbers are. People die. Now, the news covers this in such a way that makes it look far worse than it is. And, of course, it's being politicized, right? But uh, it's, it's indicative of what the mainstream press has been doing to us in this country for years. Fake news, I, as much as I hate the term fake news, it's really accurate. But when the media lies to us and tells us a bunch of gibberish bullshit, at least we can look at that and pick it apart and say, you know what? That's bullshit gibberish. Right. But it's that lie of omission that they don't tell us that we need to be careful about. For example, Biden and the Democrat Party 100% completely ignoring and whitewashing the violence in Democrat-controlled cities across this oh country. Oh, my God. They don't want anybody to know it. And they figure if they don't talk about it, nobody's going to know about it. Up in your neck of the woods... That's all they do is talk about it mm. and scare the living shit out of people about coming to a state like Georgia. Right. You're fine, brother. You're fine. Come on down. <laughs> Just don't stay too long. Go on home. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> now, all kidding aside, you know, it's uh, there was uh, I was telling you a story that the Waver. I had a meeting at the Waverly Hotel, which is right around Marietta. It's right where the Braves new stadium is, in a really nice office park. I had a meeting at two o'clock in the afternoon on a Tuesday. It would normally be going crazy down there. Mm -hmm. Then I pulled in, there was no valet. I could park anywhere I wanted. I walked into the hotel lobby, the lights were out. It felt like a classroom in high school where the teacher would dim the lights to keep everybody <laughs> quiet and cool, you know? Right. In the summertime, as if somehow the lights kept the room cool. We fell for it when we were kids. Right, we were. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, uh, it was eerie. The elevators were moving, nobody was on them. It was a big atrium, 20 some floors up. The escalators weren't moving. The restaurants were closed. 
and I had this meeting, so I went and picked a seat out of one of these open uh, tables in the middle of this huge lobby, and I noticed the gift shop was the only thing open, so I walked over to the gift shop to grab a bottle of water, and a girl behind the counter in a mask, she says, hi, how are you? I said, I'm doing great, how are you? She says, good, good. I said, this is kind of creepy, huh? She says, yeah, it's really weird in here. And I said, are there people staying at the hotel? And she said, there are, but you never see them. Mm -hmm. They come in, they go right up the elevator, they go to their room, and maybe they order food. Somebody picks it up down below. It's right. It's just not normal. She goes, I just want everything to get back to normal. And I said, if I were to tell you that I knew how you could get back to normal in one quick sentence, and it would be instantaneous, your life would go back to normal, would you? <laughs> humor me and she goes of course yeah. I said when you get home today turn off your television just That's shut it sad. off just turn it off quit watching it quit watching the garbage and don't pick it up don't pick up your phone go about your life your life will be normal instantaneously you'll notice that people are out walking their dogs you can go to a restaurant you don't have to just turn it all off and she said my dad says that to me all the time and I said mm -hmm. your dad's a very wise man yeah because that's the media perception is where I'm going with this. As you know, I've been a media critic for years, publicly, and I I, uh, I hate them. I think they're responsible for the division in the country. Everything bad that ails this country, I can tie right back to the mainstream press. It's where everybody gets their information, and it's where they formulate their opinions from, based on what they see, read, and hear. And as a result of that, when you combine that with a 24-7 news cycle, yeah, and a extremely biased, out of the closet, I mean, you don't even hide it anymore, hateful press, you've got a recipe for disaster and hence where we are now. The country can't continue like this. I don't feel good about the future right now. Yeah, it's not good. I, I tell people, uh, the you know, people talk about a civil war. I'm like, here's my concern with the civil war. There's no uniforms. And, I, and I'm in enemy, enemy territory. Uh, well, you know. You know? Um, I mean, Look, you know, we're already in a civil war. Let's get real. You're going to stay right here, by the way. All right. And up at the traffic light, you're going to hang a left and then get in the right lane. And yeah. I'll take you over to the high school. And, all right. You know, this is the one. These are the schools that are making all the... Actually, you know what? You can make... Why don't you make them right? So we're going... So right. this, is the, this is where we're trying to get to that high school. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this is where uh, the school is. Etowah High School. It's the first school in the county that closed because they had, I think, 19 COVID cases. And what the county is doing here is they're doing it right. 80% of the families, this is a very conservative county. In fact, you're in one of the most conservative counties in the United States. It's one of the most, uh, it is one of the top two or three conservative counties in the state of Georgia, mm -hmm. and one of the top 10 conservative counties in the country by voting records, deep red. And, the, the, you know, people like me wanted the schools open. My kids wanted to go back to school. Enough of this nonsense, okay? We'll make decisions. We don't need some wacky Massachusetts governor or Governor Murphy or, you know, Cuomo right. nanny state in our lives down here. We're grown-ups. We'll go about our own lives. So they instituted a program here, and this is um, what is Etowah High School, farther up, one more up, I think, all right. which is what uh, was the first one in the county to close that made all the national news originally. Because they had about, I think, 15 or 16 COVID cases right there. So they shut it down uh, based on contact outside it. They closed it and, uh, you know, the press went nuts. Mm -hmm. New York Times wrote about it. And it wasn't too long later that my daughter's school down the road, about a mile down the road, two high schools a mile apart, went ahead and shut down as well. They're reopening on the 31st. But 80% of the families in this county want these schools open. So they're following their procedure. It wasn't unexpected. They're doing exactly what they thought they were going to do. And they're on their timeline and they're reopening again on the 31st. That's a good thing. If if everyone, you know, if everyone uses the, uh, the lead slinger hand sanitizer and washes their hands, it should be... What, 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 we're at a point now. What are we going to do? Wear masks during flu season? Look, there's a lot more at play here. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm not going to put the tinfoil hat on. But when Joe Biden tells you that he wants to mandate that every American wear a mask, hey, Joe, come on down. Let's have a conversation. You don't tell me what I have to wear. Right. No American. But this is part of a bigger plan, okay? They're, they're just literally buttering you up to control. This is about control. It's about controlling every aspect of your life. And you who live in states where you have Democrat control know that more than I do. But uh, nonetheless, uh, it's, it's very sinister motives. And I want to ask you and you and you, 
when you talk about being disarmed, when you look at hang on, right, when you look at a state like Virginia, for example, Democrats lost power in Virginia. Hell, they hadn't had power for years. Twenty-five years, they regained power for the first time in a quarter century. And what's the first thing they do? About nine to ten different gun control bills. Eight of them were signed by Blackface Northam. They didn't go to fix infrastructure. They didn't go to fix schools. They didn't go to fix their, you know, state insurance programs. They didn't go to fix any of the tunnels, none of the bridges, none of that. They went after gun control. So you have to ask yourself. When a political party grabs the reins of power for the first time in a quarter century, and the first thing they do is move to disarm their population, that begs a legitimate question. What is it about this agenda that requires them to do that? Yeah. Go What's ahead and next? get in the left lane and just stay straight. All right. What is it about that agenda? Because what you've seen happen in Virginia is the, is the model that they want for you on a national level. That's what they want to do for you. That's when Biden tells you he wants to, you, you know, you're, requires you to wear a mask. Sorry, bro. You don't tell me what I have to wear. You also don't tell me what I can put in my pocket. You don't have the constitutional authority to do that. We won't argue that on riding shotgun with Charlie. It's just we don't have enough time. Right. But uh, it's it's all control. This is all about control. It is a communist, socialist, Marxist agenda. And getting you used to living under those. What are we going to do? You start wearing masks now during all flu season? I mean, come on. You know, that's, their, that's what they're buttering you up for. Right. And unfortunately, there are people that fall for that. Everybody looks the same uh, with the mask on. You can't tell anyone apart. I've actually thought about doing this. I've thought about, okay, we'll wear the mask when we have to wear the mask. When we can stop wearing the mask, I want to keep wearing my mask. <laughs> Just, <laughs> well, no, they won't let you because then you become a threat because you're not allowed in a bank. Up until COVID, you weren't, you know, they told you anybody with a mask on carrying a gun, you were a... Come on, you were going. That's against the law. Right now, it's okay for some reason. Why is it okay? It's gonna, yeah, you know, it's gonna. Because go it was all. It's always been okay. Because law-abiding people don't break the law just because they put a mask on their face. Yeah. Right? Uh, that, what this is is this is about pure control. It's frightening. It is. What's happening in this country right now today? But um, you know, I, I do believe, as I mentioned on the air all the time, freedom will prevail. Freedom will always prevail. Mm. But as Alan Gottlieb, you know, mentioned with. Um, what the folks in Virginia are going through right now. Unfortunately, they're gonna they're just they're gonna have to go through the meat grinder until freedom prevails again. Mm. And right now they're going through the meat grinder with all this gun control. They'll fix the problem. It'll take some time. Right. You know, we don't want to have to go through the meat grinder, you know, after November if the wrong thing happens, God forbid. I'm kind of concerned about what's going to happen regardless of who gets elected. You need to be. Because if uh, I do think that if, if Trump gets elected, then the um, the folks on the left are going to become more. Sure. Uh, they're they're going to. They'll never accept the Trump more. presidency. They won't, and they, they've already ex they've already gotten to the point where they won't accept it. Hillary said at the DNC, she said, you know, he's trying to uh, trying to s s uh, steal it, and okay. uh, he's trying to steal the election already. Wait a second. Well, they're setting you up for that. They're setting you up for a Trump victory in advance. They're laying out their their, their, their agenda and their excuses. Yeah. They're already preparing you for that in advance. It's not, none of this is by happenstance. All of this is by design. Mm. It wasn't coincidental that they refused to mention the violence in Democrat-controlled cities. Right. That, that, wasn't, that didn't just happen. That was by design. They're, you're not going to talk about it. It's not part of their bullet points or their talking points. And I've made it very clear over the years on Armed American Radio, if you show me a city in decay, show me an American city in decay, I'll show you an American city controlled by Democrats at every level for decades. Mm -hmm. It's impossible to prove that wrong. Impossible. And what you're seeing now is the Democrat Party set you up using their friends in the mainstream press for a Trump victory so that they can go out and claim it's illegitimate and continue the rioting that they're not talking about, that right. they absolutely 100% support, or they would be decrying it on these messages. Joe Biden would be saying, absolutely no violence. Violence is not the way. John Lewis would never accept this level. Never. Mm. But they don't. They're silent. Right. That's a, that's right there is a lie of omission. They're not talking about it. So that means complicit. Yes. So very frightening stuff. But you're right. I agree. No matter what happens with this, with whichever way it goes, the left will never accept a Democrat, or will never accept a Trump presidency. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, with if uh, if Biden gets elected, then they're going to enact all that. Um, oh, they're going to come after you, lock, stock, and barrel. Everything yeah. they've talked about, and then we're going to be put in a position. Yeah, I, I hate bumper sticker logic until I actually love bumper <laughs> sticker logic. Right until it's in your favor. Yeah, until it's in my favor. I love I love it when it works. 
Okay, but if 150, and I think gun owners in America, you hear 100 million gun owners, I would put that number closer to 150 million, maybe even higher, particularly with what we're seeing now with yeah. gun ownership off the chain. And that's another subject. Why is gun ownership flying? Because of what the Democrat policies are. People are seeing for the first time the reality that, hey, you know, that gun nut was right. Mm-hmm. Okay, my city's burning down. 90% of Americans don't want the cops defunded. Right. Okay? 90% of Americans want their right to keep and bear arms, whether they choose to exercise it or not. Mm-hmm. But they want the right and the ability to be able to exercise right. it. And we're seeing that right now. They like knowing it's there. But I would think that you would, I would put that number north of 150 million as far as gun owners. But that bumper sticker logic, here's what I tell the Democrats, you know, if 450 million guns, and that number's probably much higher, in the hands of 150 million law-abiding Americans were a problem, pal, you'd already know it. You'd already know it, absolutely. Absolutely. But we're getting to a point in this country where people are actually talking about, uh, you've you've got the individual, I forget where he was, at the town council meeting, that said, look, we're peaceful right now. Oh, We're peaceful right now, but we're not going to be peaceful forever. We're not going to continue to be kept down like this. And what they're doing is keeping people down. They're trying to use it as an election ploy Mm -hmm. to try to get their agenda enacted. Let's face it. Rinky-dink Biden can't remember who he's... He doesn't even remember who's running with him. (laughs) Okay? The fact of the matter is... Well, I don't want to get... I don't want to put the tinfoil hat on. Other than that, (laughs) Other than that, I have no strong (laughs) feelings about it. (laughs) Let's just say that uh, Biden is... is Biden is a Trojan. As a Trojan horse, there's no question about it. Uh, this is not the Democrat Party that you knew even 10 years ago, 12 mm-hmm. years ago. This is certainly not the Democrat Party of John Kennedy. You know, I believe back then everybody loved their country. They did. Right now, there are factions of the Democrat. They hate their country. They hate what this country is. The left wing has pulled them so far left right now that they're out. They're just out, mm-hmm. and, and you know they can't put that genie back in the bottle. That smoke's already left. The grill smoke is gone. Mm-hmm. You can't put it back in. We all know who you are. We know what your agenda is. Now America has a very stark choice. And I'm going to tell you right now, on riding shotgun with Charlie, Trump plus 300 electoral votes again this year, probably far more than that, in what I believe will be an electoral landslide. Wow. All right. Hope I'm right. I hope so, too, man. Uh, yeah, the Biden stuff scares me. It, it should, really does. It, should. it really does. And, the, and he's not coherent with much you know stay sheltering in his basement the whole time not letting him out did you see the press conferences where his wife is actually answering questions no i know but Ooh, I, you know a second janet mefford was on the program last night and she mentioned during the second hour of the show that, and i hadn't even thought about this that some people were talking about his live speech actually being pre-taped uh yes. there's no way we would know that and she went back and gave some details i thought that was fascinating she, yeah she talked about wearing different cufflinks or something a different watch or something like yeah. that there was something noticeably different that she said others had talked about now look again i'm not that conspiracy theory guy however i know what i can do with my cameras and what you can do with these cameras and there's absolutely the possibility that that easily could have been done that he taped it and then they cut to the next scene where he's standing on that podium and they're pointing at that goofy wall with all those <laughs> little kids you know oh, it was so funny it was so funny to watch but if it wasn't so dangerous uh, you know, i don't know if she said this last night but i heard someone else say that michelle's speech was possibly not live either no clue because she didn't mention uh she didn't mention kamala harris in the yeah, well, you know, so, I, you know, who knows? That was a clown posse show. It was worth watching for the humor. <laughs> uh, sometimes, you know, people like me, I have to take my metoprolol medication to keep me calm. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> keep my blood pressure down. That's doctor's orders. Doctor's orders. Doctor. Co- do- I, you know, Dr. what we're talking Dan. about is it's really pathetic. I mean, it's really sad where we are in this country today that there's a political party trying to destroy the nation. And uh, that's exactly where we're at. You know, it's unfortunate. Uh, yeah, it's not good. All right, we're almost back to your place, aren't we? Yeah. All right. We're, getting, we're getting fairly close. I'll run you in the back way. All right. Well, um, let's wrap things up. Uh, every, uh, we know we can all find you at Armed American Radio. Yeah, uh, dot .org. Armed American, Armed American Radio. Radio. Well, dot dot com org. will get you there, too, but dot .org will get you there, for sure. Gotcha. You've got uh, subscription-based stuff for all your shows now, too, right? Yeah, and listen, uh, it's important. Armed American Radio is one of the loudest voices in America fighting for gun rights. The show is very important now in its 12th year. It continues to grow. We've added new affiliates almost every month, forever. Uh, but it's not free. 
to keep the program on the air. If you want to support Armed American Radio, it's real simple to do for seven ninety five a month, uh, seven dollars and ninety five cents a month. The price will never go up. I'll never raise it. You can become a premium subscriber. That's in its infancy right now, mm-hmm. and you get some behind the scenes conversations with me, videos and stuff. Um, you have your own private email address directly to me. I answer every email that comes into me from premium subscribers. Very cool. You can hang it right up here. All right. So, yeah, if you want to support Armed American Radio that way, you can do that at $7.95 a month. We'd appreciate it. ArmedAmericanRadio.org. Just hit join now. All right. The um, the YouTube videos you guys have been doing. Yes. You're doing stuff almost every day with Pinkus. I haven't done it in the past week, but, yes, we had some technical difficulties. We're in the process of experimenting. I'm using all this as a tool as I continue to grow Armed American Radio and we move into doing a lot more video. We're also doing some television. Mm -hmm. Uh, Armed American Radio's daily show, Monday through Friday, 4 to 5 Eastern, 1 to 2 Pacific, is televised along with the Sunday show on the West Coast on 11 different television stations, stations, broadcast stations in Northern California and Reno, Nevada. That is cool. That network is growing. So, you know, we have no problem providing the video for them. I think we air at 9 p.m. I don't have much information, believe it or not, on the on the TV network, but well, nonetheless. I wasn't sure if you were just doing that, like, I was able to catch it, you know, being home from work with all the, no, you know, whatever. The oh, you're talking about the pinkest heels. Yeah. yeah, I, at the, um, when you, when you do them at, like, noontime. Yeah, well, what we're doing with Rob, I call it the daily shot. It's an experiment. We're working to get new information out to everybody in different formats every day. Mm-hmm. And Rob and I got to talking about training issues and things like that, and firearms-related issues. And it was interesting. It started getting really popular. Next thing you know, we had thousands of views. You know, by the end of a day, and you just cool. keep going straight. All right. And as a result, uh, we just continued to do it. Last week, we were out. The network had some problems, and I had to change some audio settings. And uh, gotcha. as a result of that, I don't know that that's fixed yet today. But we'll get back to that normal. I, what you can, what I can tell you with certainty is, you can watch my Armed American Radio Daily program, and you can watch the Armed American Radio Sunday program, four to five Eastern. 1 to 2 Pacific for weekdays and Sundays, 8 to 11 Eastern and 5 to 8 Pacific on the Facebook live stream. The new website's being built. When that's done, I'll have players and streams on the page. You'll be able to go there. Very cool. Awesome. Try to keep it away from Facebook if we can. Yeah. But it is a huge platform. It is just is what it is. Cool. All right. Well, listen, we're going to wrap things up. Thank you so much, Mark. Oh, always, always a pleasure, man. My Thanks, pleasure, Charlie. Appreciate Mike. it. I'm happy to be down here in your neck of the woods. Yeah. Uh, please make sure you like and share and watch Writing Shotgun with Charlie on YouTube and on Gunstreamer. You can listen to the show uh, on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, on iHeartRadio, and... Uh, um, Keep going. Thanks, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to get the hand signals. That's in. right. Um, right uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Uh, also, check out the Self-Defense Radio Network, sdrn.us.com. It's all your self, uh, pro-freedom podcasts in the same place. And uh, we will see you guys next time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I love it. <laughs>